it was a great opportunity to partner with my, my good friend uh, Chris Burnham here on a topic that we are both quite passionate about, good governance. And um, at the Sphere magazine uh, approached us, uh, Mark Mendelson, who has been a leader in, for more than a decade in the public sector in fighting corruption, was the guest editor of this, this edition. Um, so we were happy to collaborate on a piece um, that I think we were uniquely um, qualified and positioned to, to write, having both had leadership roles in the public and private sector. Um, so it was just a great opportunity, I think, to share um, what we've been able to, to see from our experiences with everybody else uh, on the lessons that the, the public sector can learn from the private sector uh, in the area of fighting corruption and good governance. Rule number one, tone from the top. It's important to have uh, that tone set at the very top of a corporation, uh, the board, uh, the very top of a government organization, the leadership of a Congress, the leadership of a country, the leadership of an agency. But we know that it trickles down. We also know that there are certain protocols that you're going to follow when, when simply to make sure that, that you're dotting the I's and crossing the T's. For example, it's pretty standard to have an audit committee. It's pretty standard to have independent audits. It's pretty standard to have ethics training and, and ethical standards, whistleblower protection, all these kinds of things. But it's, it's not good enough just to give lip service to it. You can't, just can't say, well, we, we have a whistleblower protection policy. It actually has to be enforced, and there has to be some methodology for justice that, that allows you to to seek justice when you think either the uh, agency or the organization has been wronged or, or the individual has been wronged. The Clinton Global Initiative and the Gates Foundation are two um, uh, perfect private sector examples where they have um, been better stewards of their resources um, of their donors' resources in, in helping make sure that the maximum amount of money goes to the projects and the people that they're trying to help. Uh, the, they are better with respect to transparency. They are, there's more accountability. They're also more aggressive with respect to ferreting out, um, you know, fraud and corruption on their, you know, projects that they work on. Uh, and this is something that the private sector and you know, corporations have done um, a really good job, not every corporation, but a significant number of them in the past decade in putting in place better programs within the corporations to make sure um, that the corporate resources you know, are not being lost to corruption. And we've talked about this, I mean, a trillion dollars a year is lost um, to corruption. And that's worldwide. Worldwide. And that's really a tragedy. And, um, you know, people talk about corruption as being, you know, a victimless crime, and that's really um, not the right way to look at it, because we all suffer from corruption. It's opportunity, you know, cost to society with respect to, you know, the money lost that would have gone towards, you know, infrastructure and public services, and it's the opportunity cost to corporations and thus to society, you know, for lost business, for corporations that are committed to good governance, you know, and are trying to operate cleanly. Chairman Volcker and his team did a phenomenal job of going after the corruption. However, we've seen very little action post their report, his report being issued. I mean, there have been very few prosecutions, uh, a couple in the United States, um, and you know, one or two in Europe. But I mean, there there were hundreds and hundreds of people uh, who were identified as having been involved in, you know, as Chris said, you know, one of the the largest corruption scandal in in history, and you know, governments didn't have the will post the issuance of that report to go after those individuals. And, you know, we need to see aggressive pursuit um, when corruption is identified or it's never going to change. Foreign direct investment uh, can have a, a critical uh, benefit to, to uh, developing countries because foreign investors aren't going to come in unless they have an assurance of the same kind of governance, oversight, transparency, uh, uh, accountability that they would get elsewhere by developing elsewhere in the developed world. 
So they're going to come in, they're going to bring in their accountants, or they're going to bring in their bookkeepers, or they're going to train people. They're going to want to see uh, the, the, the same kind of uh, regulations in place that's going to protect that capital um, going forward. And that has a tremendous spillover effect. Because when you make that investment, and even when you presumably pull, harvest that investment and pull that money out, you still are leaving a, a cadre of trained bookkeepers and accountants and lawyers and, and uh, individuals who know how to run an investment, a company, a enterprise with the same standards and governance that's going to be required to attract even more foreign direct investment. Foreign direct investment is really the most powerful tool for uh, raising the, the ships in the harbor of all developing countries. What we were trying to say in, our, in our, uh, the article that we wrote is that it's time to, re to revisit uh, how those organizations are uh, approaching this issue. You know, we look at, as we've mentioned again, the, the Ford Foundation, the, the Clinton Global Initiative, the Gates Foundation. These are organizations that um, have um, changed with or are operating uh, within the times that we live in now. They're taking the lessons from the private sector they are the private sector. They're taking the lessons and doing public sector work, um, but marrying what they've learned, the best from both worlds together, to be more effective and to be better stewards of the money. So our, our piece was, um, I guess the point of it was to say, there's a lot to learn. And we put a lot of pressure on the private sector, you know, to, to quote, stamp out corruption. Private sector can't do it alone. And the private sector has made, you know, phenomenal inroads in this area. And they're being held to a higher standard. We'd like to see everybody held to that same high standard. And, and we think that if everybody works together at that same level, um, we'll have a better chance at you know, lowering that you know, annual you know, cost that's lost to corruption every year. The answer is yes, but I think at the same time that we have to understand, you know, that there are laws that need to be followed. We have to, um, you know, work in getting information out. I think that it could be used within certain countries with respect to transparency on budgets, you know, on money that's flowing into the country and where is it going. Most definitely yes, but we also have to be respectful of, of the laws in certain countries and make sure that. Um, uh, that we're following those at the same time. So I think that the cat is out of the bag on the internet. It's going to be very difficult to put any kind of controls on the internet going forward. And that's going to have a very powerful effect as it unleashes uh, a, a revolution in communication. J just like the, the printing press revolution of the 15th century, uh, this is a revolution. We've only been in this communications revolution for uh, about uh, 20 years, uh, you know, as recently as 1995, 1996, only 3% of American households had internet connectivity. So, you, you know, this has been a uh, exponential ride in terms of uh, unleashing the power of the internet around the world. It can be very difficult to, to uh, put boundaries on that. It's a revolution in communications. It's changing the way we do business. It's certainly adding one heck of a lot of transparency that we've never seen before, but that has a good aspect and a bad aspect to it, as of course we've seen with the WikiLeaks.